we are starting uh, first talks today. Hope you enjoy the <coughs> keynotes. Um, you are here because you are interested in understanding cultural differences for approaching open source My name is Daniel Izquierdo. I'm, I'm CEO of a small company doing developer analytics in Spain. I'm president of the Open Source Foundation as well and recently appointed as a board member of the Project Foundation. So it's my pleasure to be here with Willem. Yeah, my name is William Jell and uh, I'm now a backend source post uh, and uh, I'm also the, uh, as a board of directors in the Optics of the Foundation and uh, it's really my pleasure to uh, share some experience uh, with Daniel today because uh, there are a big cultural difference <laughs> from, from our perspective. Yeah, but we enjoy those a lot. Um, so this is going to be more like a to all men coffee discussion, except that we are not all or that old, but it's a coffee discussion, so we would like you to join and come in and share your, your ideas. Um, the problem statement here basically is, and all these conversations started because we, we would like to learn how to effectively engage newcomers from different regions. Yeah, and uh, we are open for discussions, and uh, if you want to join, just raise your hand and I can give you the microphone. and. Uh, just share you some experience or some of the visions you have, so we can get some uh, talk together. Yeah, um, and, and just to mention, well, you didn't bring the t-shirt, but basically we both bought this t-shirt in Hanoi, in, during Force Asia, in April was, right? Um, we both said at the same time, we love that. Why is this? Basically, because you can see here a lot of motorbikes, uh, buses, trucks, cars, traffic lights, and there's one person in the middle, like, with a question mark, like, what do we do? So this is Hanoi. Hanoi is basically, you try to cross the street, you don't know how. So what do you do? You follow the locals. The locals do like, raise their hand, and then simply cross the street. They don't, they don't go backwards, they keep moving forward. So basically you learn, you know, by looking at others, and by doing, and then you try to replicate what they do. The problem with open source is that you can you don't see others how they behave. You can learn by learn by, you know reading, talking to others, but you don't directly see how others are programming, you know, having discussions, etc. Et so those and even more if we are in different time regions, different time zones, etc. So then that gap is bigger and bigger and bigger. So how can we approach this? Oh, yeah. Um, in this way you need to build up the social currency is like uh, um, I'm not quite sure if you guys know about the Chinese name uh, order we put the family name first and uh, um, the game name uh, thing and uh, but uh, to to talk to people a lot of people know me as uh, but uh, my Chinese name is uh, Jiang Li yeah. um, so that's the difference and uh, um, it's like uh, uh, there's a cultural uh, roots uh, um, and uh, there's a historic uh, reason or there's a uh, um, uh, the, the Chinese people value family uh, uh, cultural value fam family a lot so so that's the difference so if you know about that I, I think Daniel uh, can share the same things because uh, we have these kind of conversations uh, in the first place yeah, so the first time you know Willem, you say, okay, should I call you Willem? Yang Ning? Yeah. Ning? Yang? Willem? So basically you don't know. And then Willem says, okay, well, this is my name, so you can use my worst of name. Okay, so then it's it's easy for me, but probably if I do this in China, then it might be rude. In Spain, uh, we have the surnames. We have the surname of my father in the first place, we have the surname of my mother in the second, in the second place. Basically, Fierdo is my father's surname, Cortázar is my mother's surname. Um, you don't use the uh, father's or the family uh, name unless this is kind of formal at the university, calling you and so. And by the way, we changed the law in Spain recently, so basically you can decide if mother's surname goes first. My son, for instance, is mother's surname in the first place, and father's surname in the second. So it's, it's all about having these small details that might be a difficult part. So just a side note for the discussion. And uh, today we will well, uh, share a bit of our lives and uh, our meet. And so the two, three used to uh, identify the uh, 
cultural difference. And uh, we are also try to build the community. We will share some example here. And uh, yeah, we also share some lessons we learned. Um, yeah, China and Spanish. We have the direct flight, it's about two hours. Oh, not two hours, <laughs> 12 hours. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like uh, we are sharing some common cultures. Uh, just like um, food. <laughs> oh, yeah, food is super important to do business in China. Food is super important to do business in Spain. So basically, you go to China, you feel like home. The people are eating, they are having great conversations, they are doing business. Um, so that's, you know, it's a way of looking for those kind of cultural aspects. Yeah, yeah, and uh, because we are doing the open source, it's like it gives us uh, platforms to collaborate, mm -hmm. even cost the uh, country and uh, cost the time zones. And uh, yeah, because of open source, I meet a lot of interesting people, and uh, I really enjoy that. Um, so, how did we first meet? <laughs> Zoom, through the Zoom, a lot of Zoom meetings that during the pandemic. I attend a chaos meeting and uh, then the inner source comments. Yeah, I, I have a lot of meeting with Daniel. Mm -hmm. But we never meet uh, until last year. Yeah, that was the first time we met in person. So we had tons of hours working together on different, different things. And basically, we were helping each other to be onboarded on different communities, how to approach things. So basically, we then was advice, you know, you're coming to China, that's great. So then you were, you were talking to these people, so this way you behave. In certain rules or, or guidance. Um, to start with, uh, we, 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 did, we had like a book club, so then we were sharing with each other a couple of books. The first one was The Culture Map. This is a quite interesting book um, to learn about how uh, people do business in other cultures. I really love just an example here the chapter of how late is late. Yes, so being late to a meeting means different things for Germans and for British and for Spanish. Um, we all know that. And basically, I can meet with some friends, and you have usually the 15 minutes late, and that's totally okay. Maybe even up to 30 minutes if you are a teenager. So, all that range. That perhaps uh, if you move to a more business environment, five minutes should be okay. If you are five minutes late and you are having a meeting, I know, it's hung up in the US, you will probably receive an email like, okay, how can the meeting? It's all because we have this different perception, and that's totally okay. So, basically, it's about learning from the others what are the expectations and trying to learn this. Um, and the other one? Yeah, that's a uh, uh, Chinese book. That's, uh, there's a, don't worry, there's an English version. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Chinese name is uh, Xiangzhu Zhongguo. Um, it's like, uh, 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 translated into uh, English, it's like uh, from the soil. Uh, I, I think uh, it's just show you a uh, fundamental of the Chinese society. Uh, it was written by Fei uh, Tong a uh, very famous uh, sociologist, uh, sociologist, and uh, um, this book was written just after the uh, Second World War, a uh, very long time. But at that time, so Chinese society is based on the uh, this kind of uh, people are not living, uh, uh, just living in the uh, uh, in the countryside, and uh, um, the the Xiang Tu uh, means uh, your your home and. Uh, uh, Xiang means your uh, countryside, to means uh, earth, and uh, put them together is like uh, your your hometowns and uh, your ho uh, your home biology or your native soil. And uh, we can use the uh, uh, Xiang to, to uh, modify uh, China is like uh, uh, just tell you the Chinese society is grow uh, on top of the soil and the people are touched to the to the land. I will explain this later and. Uh, the, the quite interesting thing is uh, uh, this book uh, do some comparisons between the Western society and uh, uh, Chinese society. And uh, there's a quite difference, and we will touch it uh, later. Yeah, uh, on top of this, just to show you some more uh, uh, contributions to, to this, so I was part of a paper on understanding barriers for contribution, specifically at the, at the Apache Software Foundation. There is the, an academic paper if you have a specific interest. Uh, in short and summarizing this, basically what we what we what we were discussing, we uh, surveyed people, we interviewed people, and then we were learning from them different barriers to contribution. Uh, the usual barriers are, of course, language, gender, economical status, but there might be others, and those others are these cultural differences that we are trying to to 
to talk with you today. Uh, just to uh, let you know how to read the, the chart here, um, each of the dots are the number of barriers that we found and then we characterize them. So if this is something at uh, the process going to the x-axis, you have process, technical, social, then basically this is characterized as a technical problem. I don't know Java, for instance, or might be a process level. Uh, I don't really understand how to do a code review or code reviews are poorly done here and there, whatever. And then uh, the y-axis, basically individual level, project level, foundation level, uh, was a way to characterize the issue and who can mitigate that challenge specifically. So then there might be process issues uh, that are uh, can be uh, mitigated at the foundation level or might be mitigated at the project level or at the individual level. So if you don't know Java, well, it's probably most of you, uh, you know, it's, it's on you basically to learn that Java, probably with certain help maybe from the foundation, but it's probably you. And then there are other, other things. So, um, uh, so there were in total 88 challenges that people were facing when contributing to open source that are a lot. But this is a good framework to start discussing, okay, what are the usual challenges? How can we mitigate them? And try to apply this to our own scenarios in our own open source communities. So we have the culture map, we have uh, from the soil, mm -hmm. we have these uh, results and, and outputs. Yeah, and uh, the basic principle of the open source is like uh, be a transparency and let everybody to join without any barriers and uh, we build a collaborative uh, environment and uh, people are free to use and distribute the software and uh, yeah, that, that says many on purpose and uh, we attract uh, the people uh, globally, but there are still some challenge here, different time zones, it's really hard for, for people to find that right time to set up the Zoom meeting <laughs> and uh, language barriers. And uh, I, I think there's a lot of uh, Chinese uh, community have these kind of things, but thanks for the uh, AI. Nowadays, uh, the auto translation is much better. <laughs> and another part, part is the cultural uh, difference. Uh, we will uh, get more details about this. Hmm. Okay, uh, ah. well, let's start specifically with this idea of individualism, collectivism, and so on. Let's go how we typically work from a Western society perspective. So we have communities, yeah, and then basically you are individual and you say, well, I would like to join this community. And then in, at some point you are, you say, okay, that's enough for me. I leave the community and you, you may make some friends, you may make some colleagues, but then after all, it's not like a super big deal. You simply leave the community, you join communities and that's, that's easy. Oh, yeah, from, from the Chi uh, Chinese society, it sees a little bit of conflict. Um, you can see uh, there's a lot of circle uh, um, image. You, if you uh, drop a stone into water, there's a uh, uh, river uh, spilled out just like uh, uh, circles. And uh, each circle uh, meet together. It's like uh, they built the connections. Uh, built the relationships together. And uh, um, it's uh, a little bit complex because uh, if you want to build a very good uh, relationship, uh, you, you need to put a lot of uh, efforts on it. So that just means uh, um, we valued a lot, um, such as the blood, uh, the relatives. And because we are banded together, we we already have these kind of connections, so people are, uh, are, are stick to have this kind of uh, relationship. And uh, um, yeah, uh, for for Chi uh, uh, Chinese people, um, there is a big family, and the people stay together and help each other. And uh, also, um, uh, for this this part is also explained. Um, in old days, it's like uh, all the people are. Uh, living in the small towns and everyone's know each other and uh, there's an identity of the region. So, so, so just like me and when I go to the college, I leave, the, leave my hometowns. We usually have the um, uh, group, uh, it's like we are come from the same place. We should help each other. So that is the uh, Chinese people uh, work together. Um, and, uh, oh, next slide. Yes, sir. Uh, there are some Chinese character <laughs> uh, lessons here. And uh, uh, the first one is uh, uh, how we call it the ripples. Uh, it, it's like uh, there's a three point, which means uh, water. And we call it a lun. 
uh, it's just mentioned about the repos. And the, the next part is uh, also named the same one, it's uh, called the Lun. But uh, uh, for the left side, it's uh, talking about the people. So uh, that's the relationship uh, we should follow. And uh, there's uh, five relationships. It's like uh, uh, parents and uh, 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 siblings and uh, uh, so on. And uh, there's a certain kind of standard. So, so Chinese uh, character uh, 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 society is more like uh, a well-organized hierarchy system. And uh, if you want to um, merge together, there are still a lot of things you need to do. We will explain it later. Yeah. Uh, anecdotal, he, uh, anecdotal data here is, for instance, in Spain, and according to a friend that was born in Chinese, uh, in China, sorry, um, he said that he's living at the south of Madrid, and he said, well, 80% of the population of China are exactly coming from the same region, from the country. China is super big, because there is this strong relationship with the family, mm -hmm. and basically all the relatives and trust base, they are coming, people basically just from the same region, uh, of China just to live in the same city, which it's basically, I trust you, so then I follow you, right? It's about having this trust. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a build, a, a bring the relationships with us yes. and uh, m migrate to another place. Exactly that. Hmm. Um, oh, this is open for the uh, oh, yes, conversation. So we, we are now into the open for, for conversations in case you have questions. We have estimated like a couple of questions would be good here and then later. So. If you have thoughts, comments, or so, just raise your hand, and we can go into this. Um, there is this. There is this. Um, this oh, yes. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. So I have a question regarding the ring-based societies and how this now relates to an open source project. Uh -huh. Because an open source project, at least in most cases we know about, is not built around a family or relatives, etc. So how does a Chinese person then join an open source project in the first place? Exactly. Mm -hmm. that, that's the question we have. And then if you yeah. think about this. Uh, oh, I, I can explain it. It's like um, my experience is like uh, if I, uh, as a single person, I, I joined the open source world. It's like I just follow the rules, just as the Daniel shows uh, uh, the the whole nice uh, status. I I just follow follow everyone's step. But there's a Chinese things. Um, if I want to uh, teach a bunch of Chinese people how to well behave in the open source world, that's a different story, uh, because it's really hard for me to force them to uh, follow the, the, the rules uh, in the open source world, because they have all their own system. So we need to be a bridge. We will talk about that later. Yeah, so from that perspective, basically, it's, it's your question. So what is more likely, what is closer to the way of working of open source foundations? So basically to the left, right? Um, and that's part of the conversation about first learning and being aware that this is this is the way uh, that we work. It, it happens, or one of the conclusions basically of today is, is that well, open source foundations are were initially Western based, right? So then those are Western flavored from a community perspective and cultural perspective. So how can we make this more comfortable to others? Um, yeah. Oh, so yeah. Uh, for the communication, it's like uh, in the east. Uh, uh, society like uh, uh, China and uh, J Japan, uh, 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 it's more like uh, people are prefer to a uh, high context communication. So, so normally you need to have a sense uh, of radar to to see in the air, uh, to to know what the conversation is, and uh, um, it, it's much better uh, if we have the face to face talk. But unfortunately, during the pandemic, uh, it's blocked. Mm -hmm. So, so I think uh, even in the Zoom meeting, it's not enough enough because I don't know how tall <laughs> Daniel is. And uh, uh, but uh, I, I think for us, it's like uh, we 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 need to know about how to uh, communicate, how to uh, work together in a yeah, more common ways. And uh, uh, the low more con uh, the low context is like open source world, and I think uh, uh, it's more uh, common ways to go. 
Yeah, exactly. It's, it's more, uh, you need to have a direct conversation. You need to be really explicit about what you, what you need. Um, this is, for instance, a way of working in the US or Brazil that were countries that had a lot of immigration from different languages. So they really need to understand each other. So that's kind of uh, shaping how people work and interact and be really explicit on certain things. The more you move into the East, basically, Europe in between, uh, the more a uh, nonverbal uh, communication is important up to the point that you may have a meeting where you need to decide certain things and there is a common understanding that that's going to happen and then you start discussing about family. We are discussing about those things. So there is a question. Yeah, uh, I don't have a question actually. I have a point uh, to mention here because as William mentioned that you know uh, you didn't meet for quite a number of years and then yeah it's challenging and uh, it's, it's better to meet, you know, have those one-on-one -on -one meetings. But uh, I think uh, companies like Gartner have already set an example that, you know, remote, even if you are working remotely, you can build up those connections. And certainly after you know, post-pandemic, we have seen that uh, hybrid and remote working culture is going to be, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be common here. So I, I like I, I certainly know that you know open source communities or has always been remotely uh, working. But what are the things you you, you think that you know you, the open source community should uh, implement in order to uh, have a smooth uh, remote work uh, culture? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I, I can share something. Sir. Yes, it's like uh, we value uh, about uh, the meetup. It's like uh, we can talk to the people more directly. And uh, for ASF, we uh, run the local community. It's like uh, we get the people uh, to know each other in, in person. And we host the meetup for, for these kind of things. And uh, 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 as uh, also uh, from Baidan side, uh, especially for the Chinese uh, uh, project, uh, uh, um, uh, a lot of Chinese say uh, uh, a little bit shy. shy. They, they, they feel they, if they are not uh, uh, see the, those people, they may not gain the trust. So th they are afraid to uh, submit the comments. So we, we, we need to provide a certain kind of bridge and uh, let them to know, oh, you are close to the uh, uh, community and you will be part of it if you follow the rules. Otherwise, uh, for them, it's hard. Oh, I, I don't have uh, the people I know. And uh, they they may not trust me, and uh, so so being a bridge that is very key uh, part for for this kind of thing. I would go for that concept, the concept of bridge and having someone that yeah. is more cultural sensitive, perhaps into these things. So then it's it's open minded and try to build that that relationship. Yeah, I mean, that's what my concern is that sooner or later we will have to build those bridges, you know, uh, between people who are working from China and Spain for that matter, or maybe from India and US for that matter, because certainly uh, it's, it's important in the new world that, you know, the whole world can work together and by using the technology, of course. But at the others, on the other side, we also need to build these bridges between uh, these remote workers, right? I would say my, my thoughts here would be, I mean, open source is giving the process and rules and tools to make this happen, and it's happening. There, people are working all around the world, you know, Linux kernel, for instance, and you, you can see the numbers there. So uh, this part probably is not is not that much into when you have to do this because your boss is telling you this, and then it's, it's forcing the situation, and you may you may feel totally uncomfortable. It's more about. Um, perhaps more community-oriented discussion and say, hey, how can we be a more welcoming community? And then try to have in mind that different people behave in different ways. Um, I've seen in, in mailing lists and forums like discussion about not using jargon, da, 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 but not that much into perhaps these cultural differences. So that's perhaps the point. And we are not sociologists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We are not the experts probably in the, in the room. So um, we keep moving forward. Yeah. Okay, so then this is closer, of course, if we move to the left in a more open source way of working. So basically that means, again, that open source foundations or projects are a bit far away from the way of uh, or, or higher context uh, uh, cultures with that, with that respect. And then in terms of communication and how to resolve the, con the conflict, you may have both, right? Direct and open uh, or talking private first. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, there's a Chinese things, and I did the <laughs> translation. Don't tell your dirty laundry is in public. Um, I, I think there there is a, a common thing in China. We are not not public. Uh, we are, we are try to avoid the conflict and try to be harmonious and uh, um, so so normally um, we address these kind of things by uh, have a mediator and uh, to talk to each other and to find uh, common solutions. It's not uh, like uh, 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 law in enforcement. So so um, so sometimes it's it's a bit uh, like uh, um, we we are not public talk about these things, but uh, um, I, I think it's how the society run, but uh, um, it could be a good to know about that. And in the meantime, um, we encourage our, uh, uh, um, just like uh, uh, talk to the uh, people from China to see uh, if there's uh, some conflict and we can stand out and we can see what, what's going on. You don't need to wait for others to take care of yourself. Um, so, so knowing the difference could be a very good to, to, to help us to adapt the more uh, direct and open way. Yeah. And then basically in open source, we've seen both. Sometimes it's talking private, sometimes it's talking in public directly. So that, that depends on probably the person. Um, yeah, and then how to make decisions, community oriented, sometimes probably in the Western countries we see more individual way mm -hmm. of thinking. Yeah, through the world. But uh, as we talked about the Luan, as you can see, it's a hierarchy system. So sometimes we, um, in a company, just like in a company, you need to convince your uh, your boss, <laughs> the manager who, who, who made the decision. But uh, in, the, in the family, it's more like uh, there's a header who take care of everyone and uh, and uh, he he's he's the key and you need to talk to him and to 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 um to convince him um but uh, in the open source world it's like uh, everyone has his own opinions and uh, we just need to talk so in this way we encourage all uh our chinese people to move to that way that's uh, a, a little different yeah. Uh, because in the open source world, it's really hard to find a manager. <laughs> well, you have the benevolent, the benevolent dictator and so on, but it's, mm. well, it's there. Okay, and then we have the concept of social currency. So but basically how you can build trust with other peers. Typically, this is done by doing things, basically, democracy in somehow, right? Yeah, yeah. As I mentioned uh, on the, the, the circles, there are some relationships. It's like uh, if you want to bring someone you trust, it's just bring him uh, one of us. We call this uh, 自己人. Um, so, so it's a kind of uh, build the relationships and build the trust. But uh, it's kind of social uh, currency and, uh, and we work with the others and uh, uh, gain the trust and uh, in this way we can work more easily. Um, but uh, this is the obstacle for the, uh, for the beginner, for the beginner of the open source, because they don't have these kind of things. And uh, if they know the open source uh, rules, it's like, uh, uh, you don't need to wait for the per permissions from others. You just uh, do it and show yourself, and then you can get the trust from the community. And so, so in this way, we encourage people to, oh, if you have good ideas, you just do it. And uh, in this way, it's, it, it's much easier for people to, to adapt, to cross the... Yeah, even though the relationships are important. <laughs> so uh, that's why we say, okay, probably both sides is a way of uh, that open source works. Mm. Um, yeah, we need to be quick. Oh, yeah. We are just oh. running out of time. So okay, okay. Um, in this way, we... Um, for the open source world, it's not just a coach, it's mainly about the community, how to bring the people together. So the bridge things is quite uh, crucial. And uh, yeah, we we are play these kind of roles and uh, doing the uh, community uh, building together. It's not just coding together, we're growing together. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I will show you something about uh, up to local community. I'm very proud of that because uh, uh, five or uh, four years ago, and we heard about uh, uh, ASF uh, Apache Software Foundation has this kind of program, and uh, and uh, at that time, a bunch of the uh, open source projects that come from China uh, is quite popular and. Uh, 
I know a bunch of people. They are all in Beijing, and uh, we hold the meet up together, and then we start the uh, up to local community chapter Beijing and uh, uh, four years ago, and uh, and uh, we uh, do some a lot of translations of the ASF uh, document and uh, hold the meet up together and bring more projects on board, and then I I read about the from soil. It's like uh, we need uh, someone to be a bridge and uh, to help the people to cross, the, uh, to, to fill in the gap to cross the river. And uh, we also have the um, face to face, uh, um, the in person meetup, and uh, it, it's much easier for us to build the trust. And uh, it's like uh, we are spending. And uh, in this way, we uh, now we have uh, more than uh, another four different uh, cities has this kind of local community. And I think local community is very crucial if for the foundations to expand because uh, local people can talk to the local people and be a bridge and uh, let the people to know more about it. And uh, yeah, and I think we, and we've Inner Source Commons. The same at the Inner Source Commons, yeah. that it's part of the Inner Source Commons. There are some people from the Inner Source Commons here and exactly the same strategy is working. There is a super great community in Japan if you have the chance to Go to Open Source Summit Japan in October, uh, you can meet them. Uh, Inner Source Commons is kind of special with that respect because it's not about producing code. We are producing knowledge and we are sharing in a safe environment. It's mainly uh, corporate. By the way, for those that are not aware of the concept of Inner Source, it's about bringing uh, the best open source practices and methodologies into large corporations with mainly the goal of breaking down silos, increasing velocity, and other things. Um, and, and knowledge is, is, is what we are working with at the Inner Source Commons. So it's, it's not code. So basically, it's just, in this case, uh, people growing and, and sharing knowledge. And local communities are running now. We had a, a gathering in Dublin. In Dublin, in, in Vienna, we are having uh, today the gathering, yes. Um, and then uh, on Friday, there was another in Berlin. So it's kind of going around the days. Um, and then open source principles. Yeah, I, I think this is quite simple. Uh, be a transparency and uh, build a uh, collaborative uh, uh, environment and be inclusive. And I think this is quite important to yes. to to embrace the people's uh, together and build a community. Oh, oh, the meritocracy is quite, and I learned it from the ASF, and so it's really uh, crucial if you run a volunteer based uh, community. And this helps us to build the social currency, <laughs> to build the trust, to let the people to uh, have the credit in the community, and then we can do uh, more important things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's about growing inside us this cultural curiosity. Um, you know, the have certain radar for misunderstandings. That's it. So it's about uh, growing this. Um, the only way I've seen so far that I, I've been able to do this is by talking to people from different countries, spending time with Willem and any of you and say, okay, this is how we behave. And then if there is something that did I do this wrong, maybe, or maybe I this, this is what you expected from me now. And, and having that open conversation and frank conversation with people. Um, but what we say here, right? Everyone brings a unique perspective to, to the conversation. So. Um, so we go back to open conversation, although we have six minutes left, so maybe we can go quicker and then maybe there's a question at, at the end. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, 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 there's uh, some observation yeah. you, you, you have. It's like, uh, you know, open source uh, community is like uh, if the uh, open source fund, uh, project founder is a Chinese, a lot of Chinese will come to you. That's uh, related to the uh, raging and uh, blood, uh, uh, blood uh, identity. It's like uh, it's easier for people to to know about that mm -hmm. and uh, have certain kind of trust already built. But uh, for the Western world, it's like uh, it's it's a little bit hard for them to 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 get the trust. But first, it's like uh, we will tell the people. Oh no, it, it it's not what we're thinking. If you do the contributions, you will get the. Uh, respect uh, the credits from the community. So so basically, we, we need to uh, enforce this kind of thinking and then add people to, to, to join. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, another thing is about the personal career and public record and this concept of social currency in open source. We are lucky that we can show what we are doing. You can prove, oh, I've, I've been participating here, here and there, and then you have all the trust of these people because we've been working together, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, we, <coughs> we, uh, this is uh, m more easier for us to tell the people and uh, don't worry about those things. And uh, you don't need to build the Guanxi or relationship first and you just do the task and to prove yourself, it's much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <coughs> then finally, tooling. Something that I learned during my interactions with Willem and, and, and others in, was, well, uh, a lot of Chinese don't use email. <laughs> So then, uh, how can I communicate with them even more? Sometimes I send an email and then I learn, oh, I was not allowed to, to reply back because I can, I can receive, I cannot send back. So how can I communicate? Suddenly you have a tool called WeChat and suddenly things happen. So uh, uh, synchronous communication, direct communication works pretty well. Conference calls works pretty well. So whatever is kind of quick and fast, it works. Whatever requires certain uh, you know, process, like a, an email, <laughs> takes takes way more time. Oh, I, I think it's just like a lot of Chinese people are not get used to the email. They prefer to give a call to the customer service. It's like, oh, they can be well taken care of. So, so I, I think it's a bit rush for the Chinese people just want to get the response as quick as possible. But uh, sometimes if we have only channel uh, through the email, we have to stand for that. <laughs> Yeah. Some barriers for me specifically is WeChat doesn't have a desktop app. So this is a call for whoever is developing WeChat, at least in Spain. So that's, that's uh, yeah, you need to have a Bluetooth. But anyway, so yeah, all the tooling basically is, is, is giving you barriers. All the way of working is giving you barriers. Languages are giving you barriers. But at least if we are aware of those, then we can, we can deal with them, right? Um, it's all about embracing cultural differences, I would say, and learning from others how this works and, and who you are and how you behave and making friends. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak of that, it's like we always kept the conversations open and uh, help the people to understand each other. And that's uh, the key part. And uh, um, especially for the uh, cultural curiosity, that is uh, also very key parts. And uh, yeah, we, we are not taking it for granted mm -hmm. and uh, have uh, another sort of the thinking could help us to be a bridge. Yeah. Um, this is our conversation, our coffee conversation. So I hope you like this. There are like two minutes probably for a question maybe. So, um, yeah. So um, we had, I work on open search and we had a number of by dance contributors that came to uh, contribute to the project. And it took us weeks to figure out that they were from by dance or their real names. Mm -hmm. uh, is there something that you, I, I, I try to reach out through my standard channels and I feel, I, I feel like I was not getting any replies until finally we got to connect with someone and then, you know, things unravel. Is there something that we should be doing differently when a contributor comes, a Chinese contributor comes to an open source project and begins contributing seemingly anonymously, very high quality code? I'm sorry, it's my bad. <laughs> I, 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 I went to uh, Bad Dance uh, last year and uh, I, I, I didn't uh, do a good job to bring these principles to the practice. Uh, but uh, uh, fortunately, we, we have built the channels and uh, I, I think a lot of people and uh, from the OSPO perspectives and we are collecting those things and uh, we have an incentive program and uh, uh, ask the people to submit the, the, the uh, contributions and then we can have a short list and uh, then I can give the training to them. But uh, um, for, for Chinese people, they are, they are a little bit shy. So, so, so maybe we, um, we need to find the, the middle who, who, who both of trust, then we can build the connection. Uh, that's the way. And I try to be uh, this kind of bridge. So if you have any questions or, or any this kind of thing, drop me an email and I'm happy to help you to build a bridge. I appreciate you using the non-standard way of communication with your email. <laughs> yeah, email, email. Uh, you, you can get me uh, emails and yeah, I will share my emails with you. He's faster in WeChat. Uh, 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 
Um, I I don't recommend it because uh, we kept in, uh, especially in Apache, we 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 are trying to cut down this way, but it's really hard because uh, most of the Chinese people has WeChat account. Um, but uh, the the most difficult thing is uh, WeChat uh, don't have the history, and if you the latest uh, one join the. Uh, we try to group. You don't know the conversations. It's not good. So, email. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I think William is actually being very humble here. Um, I think I've been doing a pretty good job, you know, since his arrival at ByteDance. But I think one of the challenges, oh, oh um, by the way, I'm Richard, I work for Ant Group Hospital, so pretty much in the same position as him. Um, <laughs> so admittedly, when you say that you're not doing a good job, um, I'm not sure about mine. Uh, but, but the truth is, um, I think one of the difficulties which I will share with all the open source community um, is, um, it takes, uh, first thing first, it takes time for the changes to osmosis going through the ecosystem. That's one thing. Um, so by all means, when you're encountering such a difficulty, feel free to tell them what the right thing to do. Um, and we'll do, you know, we'll help with that. But uh, let's speak the same language. The uh, second part is actually one of our difficulties. Um, it's very hard to identify the potential open source developers from the closed source developers. Uh, so for a company like ByteDance or like Ant Group, we have like 12K uh, of developers. We actually try to do this kind of like top down, uh, you know, like education to tell people what to do um, in terms of, hey, you know, if you're working in open source, please do this and that. Nobody give a damn to us. Because it's like, hey, I'm not working on open source code, why should I care? But then, one, you know, one year later, they come to me, hey, I need to submit open source code, tell me what to do. But that's the better part, right? Most of them, like, they don't really reach out to us. But instead, you know, like, they would just say that, hey, my boss tells me to do this, I'll probably just as well do that. Um, and sorry for your experience. And uh, I kind of feel like it's, um, I should say that because I know that many people from Ant Group does the same thing too. So apologize for that. Um, but, you know, like, while we're working on our magic, uh, I would highly recommend, you know, anytime you, you know, you find the Chinese developers coming into the community working in a way which is not abide to the community rule, help us. We can, we can speak the same language. Um, it, it, it takes time to change, but it's good to build a good behavior from day one. Thank you. Okay, so um, I was checking the, the schedule. So the next talk is starting at 15. So just to let you know, we are three minutes over, over noon, just in case you have to leave. I guess we can have more questions. Okay, so uh, we also maintain an open source project and we, I feel like we get a disproportional amount of Chinese contributors, meaning less than we would expect because we have Chinese usage. Uh, so I was wondering if there was one thing you would recommend us to do in the project to invite more Chinese contributions or even just like opening issues uh, and stuff like that, what would it be? Uh, the most easy way is uh, you find a Chinese who did the contributions and uh, make him as an example and uh, he could be a bridge. And uh, uh, I, I know there's a lot of uh, um, uh, Chinese developers who already get used to that, but uh, they are few. <laughs> so, so, so if you can get touch with them and uh, he will help you a lot. Well, well. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the questions. Thank you very much for the um, talk. And I'm Sanjang. I am a designer who are super interested in contributing to the open source project and joining the open source community. Um, and I'm also someone from a higher context communication culture. I could totally feel you what you're just describing about. So I, I think you were just mentioning about like as an individual, like you can just share freely and more transparently how you feel and then how you could like do better in terms of communication. Like, could you share maybe like how, how could like scale this like good practice in a systematic way? I, I know it could be a tough question, but I'm just really interested in how can, can we scale this good practice to other open source projects? 
a bit challenging. And, uh, for for me, I I, I still be a uh, shy. <laughs> I, I, sometimes uh, um, if I stand on the stage, I it's made me nervous, and uh, I don't want to have the conflict with others. So it, it's kind of um, burning into my burn. <laughs> so so so. Sometimes it's you um, to uh, overcome the, your comfort zone and uh, to do some things, and uh, maybe you need to have a very big motivations for the public good. No, <laughs> sometimes uh, um, I I I think you you have to move move forward. And uh, 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 fortunately, in our open source world, it's like you will meet a lot of friends, and they will give you a lot of help. That's my experience. I would say it's about finding the person you feel comfortable with and oh. then try to have that conversation. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the beauty of the open source is like you can choose your work partner. <laughs> and uh, I really enjoy it. And uh, I, that is why I'm uh, willing to give up my public holidays to to this kind of conference and talk to the people. Yeah, make me very uh, energetic. There was, uh, there was another question before somewhere. No? Uh, Okay, so maybe. Oh no. So there is. Oh. Thank you. Um, sorry. So you said that uh, you have to have a certain way of handling conflict, right? That is different in, in the in the Eastern uh, world compared to Western. The question is, what is conflict to you? Because part of the open source community, for example, is having reviews, right? And part of review is disagreement and then compromise. But what part of this process is a conflict? It's like uh, someone uh, gave you a challenge, and, and mostly um, when we have the uh, discussion in SF, it's more like uh, we discuss in a technical perspective, and uh, it's much easier to do, deal with. But sometimes, if you are new guys, and uh, when you come to a community, and uh, people just say you you are doing something wrong, and uh, sometimes uh, it's a little bit harder. For, for, for the Chinese people, because uh, we barely have these kind of things. We not um, tell the, the um, uh, more directly. Sometimes we use another words to soft, uh, use the soft words to help you digest it. And uh, if the people take it uh, seriously, that could be a problem. So, so um, in most cases, we just say, oh, this is a common conversation we uh, if we stick to the technical perspectives, uh, um, that should be fine. Even there's uh, some uh, huge conflict, and uh, we can explain it in a more technical way. And uh, so, so don't worry about that. So we we have strong heart. But uh, uh, if if you want to uh, um, just like uh, uh, want to express those kind of things, it's much easier if you can talk to people in person. Um, we are out of time after the out of time, okay. so thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you.